In this video we want to talk about estimating demand functions. Now this is very popular in uh, economics, in the study of economics. Uh, there is quite a big debate and uh, a big area of study involving trying to uh, contrast what we consider to be theoretical demand curves with those which we call empirical or practical. Um, we're inserting it into this class because uh, it's a, an interesting technique for trying to estimate uh, something which looks like it, it can't be easily estimated, a demand curve. So it's a novel solution in a sense and uh, for that reason we're including it amongst the classes here. First of all, we're dealing here with what's called demand curve identification. We're trying to identify the demand curve. You see, when we think of a market, we think of the price of the product and the quantity supplied in the market. Well, if we graph that, we have one price and one quantity. That gives us a point, a single point. It doesn't give us a curve. It doesn't give us a line gives us a single point. So how can we get a curve? How can we get um, a straight line? How can we get a demand curve out of a single point? Now that's the task and that makes it very difficult. So let's see how economists can deal with situations like this. So it, seems, it seems impossible but economists are clever people. They've got their own area of quantitative study called econometrics and they've come up with various ideas about how to resolve the issue. And there's a big debate in economics that undergraduates in economics will encounter about estimating demand curves. At any one moment in time we can only observe one price and one associated quantity. That's the point. So we only have literally we only have one point. The demand curve can uh, be traced out, not traces out, can be traced out by shifting the supply curve. Now that's the trick, that's the solution. We'll see how it works in a second. But if we're trying to estimate the demand curve, we need the supply curve. We need the supply curve because the other part of the market solution supply and demand. We need the su supply curve to try and help us to work out the demand curve. And it's only when we realize that that then that we get some insight into where the demand curve is. Here's a, a diagram that most economists, or all economists, would be very familiar with. Uh, this is the uh, supply and demand curve. On the vertical axis we have the price per unit for the product and on the horizontal axis we have the quantity per unit of time, per week or per month or whatever. And then we have what we observe in the marketplace which is the demand and it's also the supply. So it's what we observe in the market we observe a single point. That's all we observe, that one point. So economists of course then go on to draw a demand curve, uh, a straight line demand curve in this case, through the point and say there's the demand curve. Well the problem with that is that uh, we could have drawn it like this, which is different. It gives us a, an entirely different demand curve, or even that, which is radically different. So which one is correct? We see we only have one observation, so we're just making up the rest. Back to the demand curve. If we were in the supply curve, now the demand and supply where they intersect, that's the equilibrium according to this theory. The theory of supply and demand as put forward by Alfred Marshall in 1890. So it's been around for a long time. And it's what, the way we understand markets to work. So uh, 
we have the point A, which is the point of intersection of these two curves. But we don't have any other points. We know at the point A, supply equals demand. If we were to shift round the supply curve, it may trace out the demand curve. Of course, there may be problems about demand changing between the points A and B, or between A and C. So it may not be exactly where it's drawn, but, but we can, by shifting the supply curve, we're starting to estimate the demand curve. We're starting to get a picture of where the demand curve is likely to be. Now obviously there's a lot more to it than I'm doing here. I'm just simply suggesting that here's a novel solution, a novel way of looking at how to estimate something which uh, prima facie would seem to be almost impossible to estimate. So there is a, a debate between what's known as the theoretical and empirical demand curves. And this often happens in the social sciences. It often happens in economics. It, it happens in uh, different areas. It happens, um, it happens right throughout the social sciences. But it can happen in business as well. Sometimes we have a theoretical model. And then we have the practical world, the world in which we live, where the results do not exactly accord with what we predict. We predict something and something else happens. So we have this split between the theoretical and the empirical. The empirical in this case means the practical demand curves. Empirical means done by experiment. So we're, we're not really experimenting here, but um, at least not in the, in the sense of a laboratory. But we are uh, looking at the practical, and we, it's called the empirical demand curve. So there is a split between the two. Theoretical demand curves, well, these curves slope downwards because that makes intuitive sense. Uh, a famous economist called Milton Friedman made this point. It just said, uh, demand curves slope downwards uh, because as the price falls, people will buy more, generally speaking. As the price rises, people will buy less, generally speaking. Therefore, the demand curve slopes downwards. It makes intuitive sense, and that was his point. When a product is cheaper, we, we want to buy more of it. According to this view, there is no uh, need for statistical analysis. We don't need a statistical analysis. We don't need to estimate uh, demand curves in practice. The theoretical model is sufficient. We know that as the price falls, more will be purchased. How much more? Well, it doesn't matter. We just know that more will be purchased. So this is the view of the, the, the theorists. The empirical demand curve, well, looking at statistical methods in order to uh, derive a demand curve, trying to work out what is the determinants of the demand using statistics, using very sophisticated perhaps computer models. Very difficult to do. And the problem is once it's done, it's ephemeral. In other words, it's short-lived. Once they've worked out the demand curve, then tomorrow it may all change. Uh, it might change next week, but it will change. So it's short-lived. Economic relationships do not stay fixed for long periods of time. People change. Institutions change. There's innovation. There's shortages in the market. There's surpluses in the market. And all of these are adjusting. And it's almost impossible to do calculations which will um, give a static picture of the economy. So that's how economists have got over the problem. They've got over it in a sense by saying it's a theoretical construct. So we don't need statistics. The identification of the demand curve, well we don't need to do it because it makes intuitive sense. As the price falls, more will be purchased. Therefore it is downward sloping. 
and that uh, and that seems to be enough for most economists. So an interesting digression uh, away from the, the purely business uh, areas that we've been looking at, but uh, an interesting one and one worth just thinking about as well. Let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.